Matisse Thibel is an incredible defender who's just a straight up fun player to watch. He doesn't really play defense like anyone else in the NBA today, and he's deserving of a spot on an all defensive team in just his second season with the Sixers. Today in the Void, let's break down the defense of Matisse Thibel. Let's start with what Thibel does better than anyone else, block jump shots. Watch this anticipation against Ricky Rubio. He first contains his drive to the left and then fights over a screen to swallow his shot. Zoom in and you'll see he reaches for the block before Rubio even leaves his feet. Thibel knows it's coming. He studies his opponents and learns their tendencies to position himself to make these types of plays. He's always leaping to block shots from behind. He also does it as an off-ball defender by timing his help to disturb shooters. This play is nasty. Marcus Morris Sr. is isolating against Shake Milton and turns to back him down. Thibel has seen this play out before. Morris loves to take right elbow jumpers. He tries to get there whether he's pulling up or turning into the paint. It's his hot spot and Thibel knows it. Then this happens. As soon as Morris spins, Thibel plants his foot and positions himself to swipe at the ball, all without fouling. Thibel has blocked 0.8 jumpers and floaters per game this season, which leads the league. And he's the only player to log over 50 in a single season since at least 2017. Second Spectrum stat says he has 18 more blocked jumpers and floaters than the next closest player, Chris Boucher with 35. For reference, the potential defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert, has 27, and the next closest perimeter player is Andrew Wiggins with only 19. Thibel is on another level from his peers who play wing and forward. Thibel is an outlier. Thibel can get it done regardless of the situation. He's elite at recovering to close out to his assignment spotting up for threes, often blocking their shots. While the Pacers run a pick and roll here, a screen is also being set on Thibel's back because the ball is about to be going to Malcolm Brogdon. TJ McConnell sails it high over Thibel's leap, but he still recovers in time to get his fingers on the ball. This one's crazy too. Reggie Jackson passes on the short roll to Nicholas Batum and Thibel is already there to help. Batum kicks it out and then Thibel's there too. Even if Thibel gets pump faked like he does here, he can still spin and spring into a contest. I've been reporting a feature story on Thibel that will drop sometime during the playoffs on TheRinger.com and I asked a couple of his teammates for a good defensive comparison for him. Danny Green told me that he's never seen anyone exactly like him and instead compared the impact he makes regardless of size or style to past elite defenders like Bruce Bowen and Sean Marion and Andre Karolinko. Those guys are not an exaggeration. Thibel is posting these numbers while averaging only 20 minutes per game off the Sixers bench, and yet he's still near the top of the league in blocks, steals, and deflections. On a per 36 minute basis, he ranks even higher in these categories. Minute for minute, he's the league's most disruptive defender. Thibel has improved as a defender too over the course of his first two seasons with the Sixers. He's quite clearly a risk taker when watching him play, but he's locked in and blended his nature with a high level of discipline, which his head coach Doc Rivers has been very impressed by. You know, as good as he is, we thought early on uh, he was gambling. He was putting himself in a lot of bad spots. And, uh, you know, he was allowed to do that. Well, we don't. Like, we just can't. You know, you got to be solid uh, and be a team defender. Uh, with his ability as an individual defender, and now you turn him into a great team defender, uh, it's limitless in the different spots we can use him. And he's just been absolutely wonderful. Here are seven of my favorite plays Matisse Thibel has made during his all-defensive team caliber season that detail his ability to blend risk-taking with playing disciplined team defense to make a constant elite impact. For the first play, Thibel is defending Lowry Markkinen and blocks his three-pointer. It's unreal he even got there. He's so skilled at reading screens and getting through them with footwork, timing, and agility. Even after the block, he hustles back into the play for the steal. In our next clip, he bucks up a dribble handoff, perfectly timing his swipe at the ball, and then he takes it back the other way for a dunk. He makes even the most routine plays difficult for the offense. Even during an inbound, Thibel is a constant threat for interceptions. He lurks and then strikes. And anytime he does get a steal, he's excellent at finding a teammate with a pass. As a one-on-one -on -one defender, it often feels like he's mirroring every movement of the opponent, here containing Jeremy Grant, then just poking the ball away from him. In this next clip, John Wall is barely even able to dribble around him. 
This is what coaches mean by active hands, jabbing and jabbing at the ball to make it hard on the ball handler. Thibel gets beat at first by Bradley Beal on this play after getting hit with the crossover, and you can even see Thibel's feet sliding on the floor, but he has Jaguar reflexes to turn back and still get his fingertips on the step back three pointer. It's ridiculous that anybody's able to recover in this play. Beal had him beat, and Thibel still got his fingers on the ball. Thibel's recovery speed pops up again on our last play. Here he gets caught on the screen being set for Devin Booker, and he reacts as if he's switching with George Hill, but that doesn't happen. But as soon as Booker sprints towards the three-point line, Thibel begins to pounce, and this is nasty. He's out of frame and manages to block Booker's three cleanly. It's ludicrous. And I love Dwight Howard's reaction. His face really says it all. He's amazing. He's never seen anyone like Thibel. And neither have I. Thibel is different. And even though he's only six foot five, 205 pounds, it feels like he plays bigger than that. And even though he only averages 20 minutes per game, it feels like he's making 40 minutes worth of an impact because he does. I honestly just love this guy's game. He plays with real joy and he brings it to the court every single night. He's intense. He's focused. He epitomizes what it means to be a team player with every action he takes. The attention to detail that he has, the footwork, the technique, the creativity. Defense is usually reactive, but it, it never feels like Thibel is reacting. He's just moving with flow and rhythm and a real connection to the court. It's his own style, and it results in a level of talent and production that's enough for me to put him on my all-defensive team ballot for the 2020-21 NBA season. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode of The Void, and thank you to our team for putting it together. Please be sure to subscribe to The Ringer so you can get The Void videos in your feed every single Thursday, and we get a whole bunch of other NBA content, too, that comes out every single day here on The Ringer's YouTube channel. Thank you again. I hope you have a fun rest of your day.